Okay, so today's topic will be on fermentation. You know, we're going to start by making sense out of this diagram right here. So as we go through this presentation, we're going to talk about a variety of cellular uh, reactions and chemical reactions. And one thing I'd want to just remind you, the whole purpose of these chemical reactions is going to be to make a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, ATP. This is the energy molecule needed by our cells. So how cells make ATP and their energy? Well, it depends on a few certain uh, factors. And that's what we're going to talk about right now, aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. So when we go through fermentation, you know, before we actually discuss fermentation, we need to talk about what glycolysis is. Glycolysis is a chemical reaction where a molecule of glucose will be broken down into a couple molecules called pyruvate. And that is a very short symbolic diagram of what happens during glycolysis. Well, what about those pyruvates that are left over? Well, there's two pathways that will happen next. One pathway is an aerobic pathway and one pathway is an anaerobic pathway. So let's follow the aerobic pathway first. If oxygen is present, then those pyruvates generally will head to the mitochondria and within the mitochondria is where the Krebs cycle occurs and then following the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain. And these steps, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain generally make a lot of ATP. One molecule of glucose can make anywhere from 36 to 38 molecules of ATP. This is viewed as the aerobic pathway, the pathway that the cell typically follows with the presence of oxygen. However, there's an anaerobic pathway. Sometimes cells are devoid or without oxygen. And in that case, the pyruvates that are left over when glycolysis is finished will be used and broken down into either lactic acid or ethyl alcohol, depending on the type of fermentation uh, that occurs. And once these two products, lactic acid or ethyl alcohol, have been created, that will allow glycolysis to restart over and over and over, and the cell gets caught up in this loop of performing glycolysis and fermentation. That's what we're going to talk about specifically today. So let's start by breaking down glycolysis. This is the chemical process that starts in the cytoplasm. And what happens is a molecule of glucose gets broken down by molecules of ATP, NAD, and a variety of enzymes. Now, for simplicity, I've drawn glucose as the six blue uh, Cs arranged in a hexagon formation. Now, in reality, there's also 12 hydrogens and six oxygens, but for simplicity, I've only drawn the six carbons of glucose. And so what's going to happen is uh, uh, two molecules of ATP are going to begin to break down that glucose with the help of various enzymes. So here's a molecule of ATP, and my scissors represent one of the enzymes. And when the ATP molecule gets broken, the glucose is broken down into this intermediate molecule right here. Now, this intermediate molecule doesn't last very long because a second molecule of ATP and a different enzyme, once the ATP is broken down, energy is released, and that intermediate gets broken down into a couple molecules, which I'm just going to call PGAL, phosphoglyceraldehydes. Notice how each of them are three carbon molecules. Well, originally, this was a molecule of glucose, which had six carbons. So next, enzymes, which are in the cytoplasm, will add another phosphate onto each of the PGALs. So here's an enzyme, the scissors, adding a phosphate to the PGAL on the left and, and a phosphate being added to the PGAL on the right. And by doing this, this converts the PGAL into another intermediate molecule. So next, a couple molecules abbreviated NADH will be created. Now, NADH starts out as a molecule called NAD or NAD, and NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So just for ease and simplicity, I'm going to just call it NAD. And what happens 
is of course there's enzymes involved. I just didn't show the enzyme, but NAD will strip off a hydrogen and generally will carry that hydrogen over to the mitochondria. Now this happens on the right side as well. The other NAD will strip off a hydrogen and generally will usually carry it over to the mitochondria next. So now that we're near the end of glycolysis, let's focus on those four yellow P's that I've drawn. Those represent phosphate groups. Now, I've also just added four molecules of ADP. And what happens is an ADP molecule, along with an enzyme, will break off one of those phosphates to make a molecule of ATP. Now, this will happen three more times. A molecule of ADP, along with an enzyme, will break off one of those phosphates to make ATP. An ADP, with the help of an enzyme, will strip off a phosphate to make ATP. And an ADP, along with the help of enzymes, will strip off a phosphate to make ATP. And so notice what we're left with. Two molecules labeled pyruvate. Now, those and when we began, we had a molecule of glucose. Now, what's left over are these molecules of pyruvate, and these are going to be really important when we move on into fermentation next. Notice also four molecules of ATP were created. But we say a net gain. Glycolysis makes a net gain of two ATPs. Why? Well, even though glycolysis made four in the end, two ATPs were started, were used, two ATPs were used to start the process of glycolysis. So when you subtract the two that were required to start from the four that were created, we say a net gain of two ATP molecules was created. Well, now let's move on into fermentation. Well, there's actually two kinds of fermentation, and we're going to start with lactic acid fermentation. This is the fermentation performed by animals, such as bears, and in humans as well. Also, this fermentation, lactic acid fermentation, is performed by microscopic bacteria. And when we think about bacteria, we actually use the lactic acid fermentation process of bacteria to make many food products. It's, uh, for instance, uh, it's what gives sourdough bread its distinct flavor. We also use the back, uh, certain species of bacteria in the process of fermenting cucumbers in order to make pickles. And in the production of yogurt, it's what gives yogurt its, uh, its kind of sour taste to it because the bacteria produce lactic acid, which has a sour taste. And so let's go into that cellular process next. Okay, so lactic acid fermentation occurs in the cytoplasm of cells, and it occurs when cells do not receive enough oxygen in order to perform the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, which is what cells would prefer to do. The Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain make a large amount of ATP. But in order to do this, the cell needs, and the mitochondria specifically needs oxygen. But there are times when cells don't have enough oxygen, and so they have to perform lactic acid fermentation. Now, you might be thinking, well, why would a cell not have oxygen? Well, for instance, you know, there's a problem. During exercise, or let's say you're playing a sporting activity, a sporting contest, your muscles need a lot of ATP because they're working really hard. Well, solution is, why don't you just make more ATP? After all, you could break down your glucose in your body to make more ATP. That seems like a pretty obvious solution, right? Well, there's a new problem. Oxygen is needed to produce the vast amounts of ATP through the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. But because you're involved in exercise or you're playing a sporting activity, your muscles are working really hard, so they're actually deprived of oxygen. Your muscles aren't getting enough oxygen. So you could stop, but that would defeat the purpose of exercise. And if you're in the middle of a sporting contest, you're not going to just stop in the middle of the court or the field and let the soccer players go around you and the basketball players go around you. You're not going to just stop. You're going to keep continuing, I hope. So there's a new solution here, is that fermentation allows the cells to make ATP without the use of oxygen. And let's explain that. 
So fermentation occurs after glycolysis. And when we left off, we had the NADH go to the mitochondria. But I'm going to get rid of the mitochondria in my animation, not because the mitochondria has disappeared, because, but because it's not involved in this process. Without oxygen, everything stays in the cytoplasm. And what's going to happen is those two pyruvates, so let's focus on the pyruvate to the left, it's going to gain a hydrogen from NADH. An enzyme represented by my scissors will bring together the pyruvate and the NADH, and the pyruvate will strip off a hydrogen, creating NAD. Well, now that the pyruvate has the hydrogen, it's not called pyruvate anymore. It's now called lactic acid. And notice how a molecule of NAD was recreated. Well, this happens in the other pyruvate as well. Here's another pair of scissors representing an enzyme. And NADH and the enzyme and the pyruvate are joined together. And the pyruvate strips off a hydrogen, creating lactic acid. Two molecules of lactic acid, that begins to build up. And that's what causes that familiar soreness as we continue to exercise and you know, work our muscles really hard. So now that the lactic acid's been created, it's released as a waste. And as I said a moment ago, it begins to build up and it accumulates in our muscle. And, and that's what causes that familiar burning sensation. Whenever we go up a lot of stairs or we're involved in heavy exercise, that burning in our muscles, well, that's from the accumulation of lactic acid. Well, let's finish off lactic acid fermentation. Why is the NAD so important? Well, it helps to restart glycolysis. Here's a new molecule of glucose, and glucose can be broken down with the help of ATP, with enzymes, and with NAD. And when that happens, molecules of ATP get created. But if I were to ask you how much ATP is actually created through fermentation, I hope you know the answer is zero. Fermentation does not make any ATP. It makes some lactic acid waste, but more importantly, it makes NAD. And NAD is used to help the next round of glycolysis. Well, how much ATP is made through glycolysis? Well, you can say a total of four ATPs, or you can say a net gain of two, because two ATPs are required to start glycolysis. You know, while we're on the topic, I might as well bring up a few ways to help recover from an exercise. You know, after exercise, you might be a little sore. So, you know, good ways to relieve maybe some of the soreness would be through massage, whether it's through a professional masseuse or using a foam roller to kind of give yourself a massage. Also, eating bananas, which are high in potassium. Potassium is really important in your muscles' ability to stretch and contract. So eating bananas is a, a key nutrient in uh, muscle recovery. Proper hydration, not just during your activity, but pre and during and post-workout, properly hydrating yourself is one of the keys to, uh, you know, reducing it and preventing soreness in the first place. And also performing a post-stretch. I think most people know to do a pre-stretch before you perform any vigorous activity, but a lot of people don't always think about a post-stretch and it's one of the better ways to help relieve muscle soreness. So as we shift focus to the other kind of fermentation, alcoholic fermentation, this is the fermentation generally performed by yeasts, which are a type of fungus. And they're responsible for the production of alcoholic beverages and for the production of most bread. I mentioned sourdough earlier. Well, sourdough is produced by lactic acid fermentation, but uh, most other breads are produced through yeast and the actions of alcoholic fermentation. So during alcoholic fermentation, this process occurs in the cytoplasm. And because the mitochondria is not involved, I'm going to remove it from my animation. Generally speaking, this occurs in yeasts and even some plants. And so what happens is here's a pair of scissors representing an enzyme. And the enzyme is going to break down the pyruvate on the left. Now remember, the pyruvates were just created through glycolysis. So here's the enzyme 
breaking down the pyruvate, notice how some carbon dioxide waste was created along with a two carbon intermediate molecule. So let's focus on that two carbon intermediate. What happens next is NADH will, with the help of an enzyme, NADH with the help of an enzyme, the NADH will actually lose its hydrogen. The hydrogen will be stripped off by the two carbon intermediate molecule, freeing up the NAD. And notice what's left behind is ethanol. Another name for ethanol is ethyl alcohol. It's the alcohol created during fermentation. Well, the same thing is going to happen to the pyruvate on the right. So here's a great time to review these two steps that are in the notes. Step one says an enzyme will break down pyruvate. Well, here's an enzyme. The enzyme will break down pyruvate and CO2 is released. This also leaves behind this two carbon intermediate molecule. Well, then we move on to step reviewing step two. Here's another enzyme, and the enzyme along with NADH, the NADH will have its hydrogen stripped off by that two carbon intermediate, creating NAD and another molecule of ethanol. So focus on the ethanol. The ethanol is released as a waste and the carbon dioxide was released as a waste. So why is alcoholic fermentation important? What was created is the NAD. The NAD will help to restart glycolysis. So here's another molecule of glucose. Enzymes plus the NAD plus molecules of ATP will break down that glucose to make more ATP. Oh, and by the way, if I were to ask you how much ATP is created through alcoholic fermentation, again, the answer is zero. No, kind, uh, no ATP is made through alcoholic or lactic acid fermentation. The purpose of fermentation, though, is to make those NADs, and those NADs will help to restart glycolysis. And how much ATP will be created through glycolysis? Well, you can say four total or a net gain of two. You know, earlier I mentioned that bread is created by yeast as they perform alcoholic fermentation. So what causes bread dough to rise in the baking process? Well, I hope you know the answer is the carbon dioxide. As the carbon dioxide is released by the cells of yeast, the carbon dioxide gas causes the dough to fluff up and the bread rises. Well, you might be asking, uh, if bread is created through alcoholic fermentation, well, then why isn't the bread alcoholic? Well, that's because of the baking process. In the process of baking bread, the heat from the oven causes the ethanol, the ethyl alcohol, to be burned away and it simply evaporates. So as we finish up this video, you know, here's a real short practice quiz for you to try. And, you know, if you're in my class, maybe write your answers on a sheet of paper, and I'm happy to check your answers before school or after school one day. Also, leave your comments in the box below. I'd love to hear what you thought of this video. Thanks for watching.